Alaba Itu Highway in south south of Nigeria, appealing to the federal government to commence reconstruction on the road, which is in a deplorable state at the moment. Our big story tonight examines these uh, challenges and efforts being made by the relevant authorities to fix it. The Calabar Ito Highway has served as a conduit for heavy duty traffic for 40 years. It moves goods and services from Calabar to Akwaibom and River State in the South South, as well as Abba and other southeastern states. But now the road, measuring 34.3 kilometers, is a shadow of itself. Deep depressions on its surface, which barely show a hint of tire, have ground traffic almost to a halt. Communities have shocking experience to relate. I know people that had to fly out of Calabar to Lagos and then Lagos to Rio just to keep an important uh, uh, um, engagement. Since la last week we have been here, no movement and we have been suffering. We, we want government to come and do some, some adjustment for us so that we can make movement. The Federal Road Maintenance Agency in the state believes that something must be done while it waits for the federal government to release the funds for repairs. The state government, you have the authority over these companies. We have Unisim here. We have a fuel depot here. All these things are trucks coming and going. We have a lot of quarry companies here. Let us approach them. They can help us. If the roads are not good, they will not come here and they will not say. Meanwhile, the Commission of the Works says although 6 billion naira has been approved for the roads rehabilitation in the 2016 budget, other things must be put in place before the money is released. Designs for this road project is ongoing. And we are trying to bring pressure on the Federal Ministry of Works to conclude those designs as to engender award of the projects. The state of the road in Aquaibon seems to be worse. Commuters say accidents are a common occurrence and explain that they have often resorted to self-help. Some motor they fall, some work at the full way, then they fall. Sometimes we go complete, uh, we go pay money for another driver, you go buy chipping. Well, for that place we're no good, we pay for 500. Cars break down often, some simply get stuck. Fares have gone up, yet transporters hardly reach their destinations these days, making their passengers disembark and seek alternative means of transportation. This sometimes causes misunderstanding. It's so bad that erosion sites within the state have eaten deep into the highway. The state governor, Udomi Manuel, who comes to assess the damage, quickly concedes that the task ahead is more than the state can handle. This is the busiest commercial highway in the entire South South. So, this happening right now means that the entire commercial activities in this area is grounded. And this road is also a major taking the agri products to people in this other area up to the south, south, the southeast are all feeding from this road. So, if you really uh, analyze uh, what, how important this road is to the entire south, south, and southeast, you could actually see that it's one road that the federal government must do something urgent. <laughs> In the days leading up to the Yuletide, one expects that traffic would increase on the highway and residents hope that work will start in earnest on the road before the financial year is over. Some members of the National Assembly have called for the removal of funds belonging to the National Health Insurance Scheme from the federal government's Treasury single account, the TSA. They say this will ensure the scheme achieves its desired purpose of providing affordable health care for Nigerians. The call was made at the National Health Insurance Scheme Management Forum 
holding in Kaduna State. The task before this gathering in Kaduna State is straightforward. To recommend ways for repositioning the Nigerian health management structure to ensure that all Nigerians have access to affordable health care service. A responsibility many will say should not be difficult, considering the resources at the nation's disposal. But unfortunately, that is not the case. The Kaduna State Governor, through his representative, hits on some of the lapses. And the simple reason is that all our interventions are not reaching the people. Why are we not reaching the people? We still have financial impediments. We do not have a concrete system whereby we can remove financial barrier and allow people to access health university. That is the only way, the only means that we can achieve universal health coverage. Another matter hindering the success of the health scheme is what the executive secretary of the Nigerian Health Insurance Scheme attributes to lack of will from past administrators. The president's mandate is crystal clear. Go and make the NHIS work for all Nigerians. You can only do that by cleansing yourselves, you the NHIS, of endemic corruption, inefficiency and political patronage. But most importantly, you must be a good steward of that which you are entrusted, which is the commonwealth of our people. For this legislative member, the scheme is one that needs to function without hindrance. It is in the legislative agenda of the ACE Assembly to ensure that easy access to healthcare for all Nigerians is achieved and it is my resolve to give every necessary legislative support to ensure the realization of the scheme's statutory mandate. As such, it is my resolve as a legislator to call for the removal of the National Health Insurance Fund from the TSE. Affordable health care for all can be achieved, but that depends on whether the communique from this meeting is put to action and not swept under the carpet. Time now for business news on the News at 10 with Melinda. You first. First Bank. Thank you so much, Gimba. Welcome to Business News. Investment and securities trading company FBN Quest sees Nigeria's overall gross domestic product as flattish in the fourth quarter of 2016 and is encouraging the government to do something about pipeline vandalism in the Niger Delta area. In a report released on Thursday by FBN Quest, the Purchasing Managers Index for August shows a third positive reading of 52.2. Four indices were positive with the highest reading for delivery times while the lowest PMI reading was for output. Analysts say getting foreign exchange remains a major challenge for manufacturers, although some of them are swapping imported inputs with local alternatives. A policy dialogue with the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obunaya Onu, and the Nigeria Economic Summit Group took place today in Lagos. The discussion focused on how science can help the economy and the new innovations that will be put in place to speed that growth in order to boost businesses. The interface between the minister and business professionals was designed to bridge the gap between industry and technology. Nigeria is very important because the research institutes in the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology do research and they do innovation work, but they cannot do commercialization. So we need the private sector and we believe that the Nigerian Economic Summit Group can help to mobilize the uh, private sector, organized private sector, so that uh, they can now commercialize uh, these products. We have a problem in the
the country, we don't have venture capitalists. Mm. Those who can now come in and say, okay, look, we can take this risk. Our banks cannot do so uh, because uh, the gestation period is too long for them to uh, run their business uh, efficiently. So because we don't have it, we now need the organized private sector to come in and do this commercialization. And it's a win-win situation because we have, by the research we have done, we have removed the uh, largest uh, quantity of risk. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ubonaya Ono. Nigeria's equities market opened the first trading day of the month, climbing above the 28,000 level with impressive performances from key sectors. For more on today's closing numbers, here's Bisi Adibayo. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The bulls extended their rally and started September strong by nearly 3% to 28,419.92 at the close of Thursday's trading session on the back of price consolidation from highly capitalized stocks. 24 gainers, consisting mostly of industrial giants and led by Dangote Cement, CAP and FCMB pulled the market higher at 9.76 trillion naira. On the other hand, Caverton, Chalerums and Triple G led 10 other stocks with price losses. However, Thursday's total turnover was slightly lower in contrast to Wednesday's session as investors traded more than 229.22 million shares for over 2.11 billion naira in 3,243 deals. Banking stocks remain the most active in shares volume with Diamond Bank, FCMB and Fidelity in the lead. That ends the stock market reports. I am BC Adebayo. Global markets were largely mixed in Europe and Asia, but mostly flat in the United States. These are the closing figures. And that's business news. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akimami. You first. First Bank. A total of 500 youths in Lagos State have been selected to undergo a three months vocational training in the fifth phase of the National Industrial Development Program. The Director General of the Industrial Training Fund, Mr. Dixon Onoha, says that the program is part of plans to actualize the federal government's policy on economic diversification. The Industrial Training Fund is officially flagging off the fifth phase of the program in Lagos, which has been implemented simultaneously in 18 states and the FCT. 500 youths will go through a three month intensive training in various trade areas, including catering and hotel management, tailoring and fashion design, refrigerator and air conditioning, domestic electrical installations, among others. The Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the Fund believes that this will fast-track the realization of the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan. The program is designed to equip young Nigerians with requisite skills for employment and job creation and also targeted at providing a pool of human capital to consolidate and sustain the federal government's commitment towards industrialization and economic diversification. The Lagos State Government sees this initiative as a welcome development which complements its efforts to empowering the youth. Lagos State Government has established technical and vocational acquisition centers in various divisions of the state. I therefore advise the youth 
to take advantage of this opportunity and ensure that you key into these skill acquisition programs of the state. The beneficiaries of the training session are upbeat about the advantages this will bring their way. They have a very formidable curriculum. So even at um, a month, a month, you'll be able to achieve a lot that we brought here today. Though I'm a graduate of food science technology, but I see this catering services as, as an added advantage, whereby the government has made it possible for me to be able to establish on my own, coupled with the knowledge I have in school before. A total of 9,500 youths in 18 states and EFCT will be trained in this phase. Since its inception in 2012, over 74,000 youths have been trained in skilled areas. Next on the news at 10, Manchester City to contest charge of violent conduct against striker Sergio Aguero, who faces a three-match ban. That's on Sports News. Stay with us. Thank you.